Hi there. So my name is Ryan Curtis Johnson and I'm head of PR and marketing at DRPG. And I am joined by some esteemed colleagues who are going to bring some insight to the whole idea of what is all this hybrid all about? What's all the fuss about it? How do we work with it? How do we kind of get the blended communications together to execute it? Um, so joining me today, uh, I've got Priscilla. Priscilla, do you just want to introduce yourself and what your role is at DRPG? Hi, so I'm Priscilla. I'm a research and insight exec under the campaigns team and I do a lot of stats work and just googling research, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Brad Harris, uh, Senior Creative Director. I look after the output of live specifically, so I suppose my role has a lot to do with hybrid. Um, Good thing, bad thing, who knows? I think that's what we're going to decide in, in this in this conversation at the minute. Um, but yeah, I mean, I work closely with Priscilla and, and Rich, kind of we work as a, a, a trio, I suppose, as a team. Uh, so Rich Davis, um, Senior Account Director and Project Director. Um, as Brad said, um, kind of looking after the the experience, so brand and people experiences and kind of transforming what that to look like from live to virtual and now hybrid and what that looks like for engagement with people. How has the future of work changed, Priscilla, or off of the kind of insights and research that you've been doing? Well, I think that the pandemic has really accelerated a model of working, which was already in the process of becoming a thing before. And that is this whole model of hybrid working, which is essentially a mix between um, the employee being able to choose whether they work from home or in the office and also around when they work so they can fit like school drop-offs or whatever into their working schedule and that is um, becoming increasingly popular now especially because we're having a lot of um, international work happening across different um, countries so we're able to I don't know drop off a piece of work at 5 p.m in Germany pick it up at 9 a.m in LA so it's very much based on flexibility but also employee trust I would say. Thanks. Rich, I guess from a from an event side, there's always been that flexibility that's needed to be there. But with with what Priscilla's saying there, we're like this communications is vital and this flexibility of people just in everyday life. Is that impacting how the events is happening? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, virtual. The first thing it did was open the door to to a new audience because you weren't confined by having to invite people to a physical space. So travel commitments outside of that meant that that was no longer a limiting factor so absolutely what we've seen is actually a much broader scope of people being invited and that's obviously had an effect globally so absolutely we find now that especially with virtual and hybrid moving forward one of the key conversations we always have is what is the makeup of the audience and where are they from and with that we then look at key points of engagement across that event and look at when the plenary sessions are when those big brand immersion sessions are and when we've got the best kind of catch-all I suppose for everybody but you never get it right right because no. we're never we're, we're never going to get a point where we can get everybody online at the same time it's just impossible now to throw you into the to the lion's den here Brad that makes it even harder with the creativity then surely because you've got all of the stuff that Priscilla's talking about in this model and you know this is what the expectation is would we say how do you deliver then on a creativity to manage all of those expectations I think I think the first thing you need to do is <clears throat> take it back a step and, and just kind of have a campaign mindset with it um and I suppose the first thing that, that I do creatively is ask why, why are we doing this communication? What's the point of it? Who are we trying to communicate to? And um, exactly what do they need to get out of this? I think that's a really good starting point for any communication, obviously, but especially for hybrid. I mean, if you if you kind of consider your communications channels that you've got, yes, you've got a live space for people to kind of um, network in, collaborate in, but you've also got people at home. They're sitting there looking at the laptops all day long. What do we do that's different? What do we do that's creative that's going to stand out from the noise? Obviously, that comes down to the brief. That comes down to exactly what we want to get out of, uh, of exactly what this communication should be. But to me, like I say, the first thing I do is ask why and really have that campaign mindset. We've got yeah. all these different channels, all these different ways to communicate with people. It's just how we utilize them. Yeah. For me, for me in reality hybrid, I wouldn't say it's anything particularly too new. We've used it for years. Um, it's just now we're packaging and realising hybrid in, in a kind of a different sense now, I suppose. 
that's a really interesting point. Do you think, you know, without trying to be negative about it, we were just probably a bit slow off the mark of embracing it and actually maybe this situation that we've occurred, um, you know, over the last year has really just sped that pace up to really not enhance, but really take on technology solutions a little bit more to, to deliver that. Do, do, is that something we think, Rich? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it 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 depends who we're talking about, I suppose. So to Brad's point, we've been doing this for a long time with a lot of our clients, actually. A lot of our clients have had a global audience for a considerable amount of time, and they've had some serious kind of campaign moments and colleague engagement moments that have had to have a, a hybrid model. We've been working with, with quite a few on that with global hubs and bringing them all to a central space yeah. um, to, to engage as one. So... I definitely don't think it's a it's a kind of blanket. We've been slow off the mark as an industry, but I do think that a lot of people's hands have been forced um, with what we found ourselves in over the last 12 months. I mean, let's face it, none of us chose this right. We, nobody chose to be locked away for over 12 months now. So um, there is an element of reaction to it, definitely. Yeah. What are the drawbacks, do you think, to hybrid working? Um, I think probably the biggest one is um, not being able to collaborate effectively. So um, that is very much dependent on the type of task that that particular team is doing. But especially when you have to brainstorm or make very quick changes and bounce off of each other, that is really difficult. So 62% of UK managers have actually said that they are struggling with communication since last March. That's a high um, stat. So basically, because of this new way of, of working with this hybrid, it, I've always felt, and maybe this is just my opinion, but with creative, it's about being in, with people, bouncing off ideas, really trying to kind of think about it, jotting it, and it can be a spark of a conversation. Do you really get that same yeah. sort of vibe with a hybrid ra version of working rather than that face-to-face? -face? I, I know what you mean. I, I mean, <clears throat> to put it kind of simply, no, it's not the same, is it? Let's be honest. We, we've all sat on calls uh, trying to talk to each other and maybe there's a, a delay in your internet or your, your quality is not so great on, on the little window that you get to see your peer with. Um, one thing for me is micro expressions. Uh, there's a bit of research done around micro expressions and, and how those kind of tiny little express, expressive um, things that happen in people's faces can tell a massive story. So for me, particularly pitches, when I'm pitching to, to clients, I don't get that feedback, the instantaneous feedback anymore. So I can't really read the room. And I'm pretty sure that's probably going to be the same for uh, the likes of CEOs, managing directors, SLTs, anybody like that who wants to communicate a message to people and they can't see their reactions. For, yeah. for me, that's been really difficult. Yeah. yeah, and that must be massive, Rich, when it comes to that live execution, because if you can't see it, how do you know if it's going well? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's um, to your point, Brad. Yeah, there's um, I've got sometimes a third screen where I have like the team's window open and I'm trying to present and pitch and look at their reactions and gauge room. It is, it is, it is really difficult. It's quite, it's quite a convivial kind of experience, isn't it? Presenting and pitching and knowing whether you should labour on a point or not. The fact that, um, we, we can really kind of leverage data now. So to Rich's point, yes, you might not be able to get that emotional connection um, through, through kind of your video chats or, or, or whatever that might be. But what you can do is you can really um, monitor and track and understand people's viewing habits and content uptake yeah. and attention. You can understand that and you can, you can, you can um, almost react to it instantaneously. So that's a really interesting concept. What can comms professionals do to overcome these challenges then, Priscilla? Um, what Rich and Bradley both said is 100% correct. Like in fact, 98% of remote workers have reported video quality issues and about 90% of communication is nonverbal. So like this is a, a huge hindrance. But um, again, technology is the answer as well as the um, the, the hindrance. Yeah. And yeah. For as much as we are moving towards these kind of collaboration tools, what we're now seeing is the rise of collaboration platforms. So I don't know if like, you've seen Facebook's Workplace, which is yeah. essentially Facebook for um, you know a company. So it's not so much just about being able to put a message out there and video someone. It's about having a whole platform where the company culture is still taking place mm -hmm. in an active way. 
that's a really interesting point around workplace um is that yeah, we've we've got quite a few clients that 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 is their internal um kind of engagement channel and i think what it opens a door to is a bit more of a behind the scenes personal look at stuff so giving people a lens of actually you're getting added value here so coffee mornings that are hosted live on workplace with the ceo and do you know what that might have been pre-pandemic closed off to the slt let's say the top 100 of the business now do you know what you can invite all tens of thousands of people to that coffee morning live on workplace if you've got a question ask the question get it heard kind of thing so i think there are huge positives at the same time to some of this that we will definitely be taking forward um and, and are left and are left at big learnings off yeah. the bat. yes and I, I think it's very much to do with the fact that um like this whole blended workplace really kind of means blended life as in there isn't a clear structure in terms of all right my day is nine to five in the office and then that's it like gone um because of that blended nature we are expecting more means of communications with each other as well exactly you can see it like if you're walking down the street and you walk past a billboard that's 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 a piece of communications that you see right there and then and you've, you've got a message instantly that's embedded in your brain the next thing you know you go to bus stop there's a screen in the bus stop there's another advert on there there's a means of communication there you get on the bus you listen to your headphones again you might be listening to a clubhouse chat um it's con it's constant you're always downloading and absorbing messages and there's there's tons of tools that we all use every single day we probably might not have thought that's hybrid but in actual fact that is hybrid um it's just how we use them and it, it and it's what we do within those tools that stands out from the crowd and that is obviously that's my role that's that's the creative role um but leveraging like i said earlier leveraging what priscilla has told us in terms of the stats and understanding um viewer retention uh, and engagement and, and all that kind of stuff around the experience and really understanding that and, and creating really nice moments in time and and standout experiences that cut through the noise. Yeah, exactly. And it's so hard, even more so, which I think is a great way to end on this, is that everything, life is very blended at the moment. And, you know, yeah. I don't mean in the sense of blending a nice soup dish. It's more in the sense of just kind of bringing everything, work, life and personal all into one place. And it's a, it's a difficult one to manage from a creative side, from a kind of live side in trying to deliver, but more importantly, from that personal balance. And, and I, I think it's more important, more than ever to really understand the insights to it. Guys, it's been great chatting with you today. Obviously, there is lots of this information you can gather from other blogs that we're doing, but do head over to our um, DRPG um, Talks blogs that we've got, um, which can kind of provide even more narrative, even more insight and knowledge. Um, and obviously, reach out to us if you have any further questions. But thank you all for joining. You know, maybe one day we might actually do this face to face. Who knows? But right now, we'll just keep it like this. <laughs> keep it like this thanks a lot guys and cheers, that's it. Bye, uh, cheers. Thanks